Hello and welcome to Unit 2, Section 1, Episode 2 of Fisher's Class Notes. Today we're going to talk about the War of 1812 and the making of America. Our vocabulary, Manifest Destiny, Western Expansion, the War of 1812, Impressment, Tecumseh, Nationalism. We're going to talk a little bit about Andrew Jackson. By the end of this episode, I want you to understand the following three things. One, uh, British tried, the British tried to control U.S. trade. Uh, they kind of tried to act like they still owned us, and that was upsetting us. Two, American Indians were, of course, continuing to fight the expansion as uh, Americans continued to move west and make more states after we bought all that land in the Louisiana Purchase. And three, after the War of 1812, although there was really no, it was a draw, there was no real winner, we became a respected power. Britain kind of left us alone. We kind of became America. We became a power. So we're going to talk about the War of 1812 from 1812 to 1815. So what were the major causes of the war? There were four major causes of the war. One, the British were trying to control our trade. We didn't like that. They even, um, Britain was angry basically that America won the revolution, so they were a little salty about that. So they started having trade restrictions on us. We still needed their goods. They, uh, the British made the Order of Council, which forced American ships to dock in Great Britain so that we had the kind of trade with them and they could tax us and stuff like that. So they were really controlling our trade. Two, they were impressing American, because it's unclear who's American at the time, but they were impressing American sailors. Well, what did that mean? Impressing means forcing them to, um, uh, to join the British Navy. So it's like a draft, a forced draft. Uh, and basically they were stopping American ships and taking off sailors that they claimed were British citizens. We claimed that they were American citizens, but of course at the time there weren't as clear papers about when you became a, uh, a citizen, so it's really unclear. But they would stop the British ships and force them into the British Navy because Britain was still once again fighting France and needed a lot of soldiers, and we were angry about that. Three. The British supply American Indians with weapons to fight us, so we were really angry about that. Um, they were, uh, you know, giving our enemy, of course, we're the ones who are stealing their land and conquering them, but the British were aiding them with weapons to fight us, and we weren't happy about that. And number four, we wanted Canada. Canada, this area up here, so these are the Great Lakes, this is New York, and then up here is Canada. We wanted them. We wanted that land. We, they were still a British colony at the time, and we were sort of trying to free them. They didn't want to be free. In fact, when we went there, just like in the American Revolution, we went up there and we're like, we're going to free you, and they had no interest. But we wanted Canada. Canada was, uh, however, very loyal and happy to be British subjects. They were like, nope, we're good. Uh, did Britain think that they could take us back? It's questionable whether that was really a reason, but they certainly felt like they could push us around and bully us. So we're fighting the British Empire again, not much longer after the revolution. Um, Britain had a lot of advantages. They collected 40 times more tax revenue than the Americans did. And so the American states were really poor compared to Great Britain, because Great, Great Britain was a huge um, empire. However, um, one advantage that we had is that Britain was also busy fighting France. So France and, and America at the time were kind of besties because Napoleon had taken over France at the time. You'll learn more about him in world history. Um, even though he was, you know, they basically had to fight him until he was defeated. Uh, he was defeated, but uh, they're still fighting France. Okay, so American Indian resistance. We talked about how the Americans were, I mean, the British were supplying the American Indians with, um, with weapons. Uh, one of the famous leaders, Tecumseh, was a Shawnee uh, and a prophet who decided to fight American expansion after the Louisiana Purchase Territory. And he organized a bunch of different tribes to resist and fight back to protect the land. Um, and apparently he was reportedly encouraged by the British. We don't know if that's totally sure. But Britain was supplying Tecumseh with, um, with arms and helping them re recruit warriors. 
In 1813, Tecumseh was in the middle of the war, killed, and so that stopped one of our enemies uh, in the Battle of the, the Thames and um, basically kind of destroyed the American Indian Coalition that was trying to resist us. In 1814, though, there was still some resistance in the South and the Battle of Horseshoe Bend. Uh, more American Indians died in that day than any other day in history, any single day. Um, but it was an absolute slaughter of American Indians in the South. Okay, 1814 in August, Britain, Britain did seize Washington DC, our capital, and actually set the White House on fire. We, uh, President Madison at the time and his wife, the First Lady Dolly Madison, barely escaped with their lives. However, we were saved by nature. A hurricane stopped all the fires and basically put them all the fires out in the end of the destruction of DC. Otherwise, DC might have all burned down to the ground. Um, the battleship USS Constitution was um, defeated five British ships. That was a huge deal because, of course, their navy is way bigger than our navy. Um, and that gave it the nickname Old Ironsides because it seemed like that ship was indestructible. Uh, 4,000 enslaved African Americans escaped and fled to the British because the British were um, the, um, the British were on their way to ending slavery at the time, and of course, it, again, encouraging the "We'll free you if you come join us." Um, the Treaty of Ghent ended the war in December, on December 24, 1814. However, the most famous battle happened after the war ended because, of course, news doesn't travel very quickly at the time was um, in 1815 when only 71 American soldiers died and to over 2,000 British soldiers died and it made Andrew Jackson super famous. Here's a very famous painting of Andrew Jackson, the war hero, um, leading his troops at the defeat of the British. Um, so basically it was a tie that but the lesson is that Britain could no longer bully us or tell us what to do and we were going to continue expanding west expanding west but more importantly america became a national symbol the idea of national pride really grew during the war of 1812 the uh, uncle sam that's of course a famous character uh, Uncle Sam was created during the War of 1812. Basically, there was a guy, a butcher in New York named uh, Sam Wilson. And um, when people, you know, he supplied a lot of the meat to the soldiers. And so they were always, always happy at the idea of um, Uncle Sam is feeding us. So that's where that character created. And of course, our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, came from a poem that was written during um, the Battle of Baltimore by a uh, poet and a lawyer, Francis Scott Key, and he woke up in the morning and he saw that, oh, that huge flag, even though it clearly had been had all these holes in it, it was still there. In uh, 1823, our fifth president, James Monroe, issued the Monroe Doctrine, and basically, we became the superpower in the Americas. The Monroe Doctrine called um, basically said that Europe had no business dealing in the Americas, that North and South America belonged to Uncle Sam, belonged to the Americas. So even though America didn't really win a war, we felt like winners. We became America. We felt like a winning nation. All right, thanks for watching.